Hey, I'm Scott, and today we're going to talk about how to power your Zcam E2 with a V mount battery. So, getting right into it, I want to break this video into two parts at this time and this time. So, if you want to skip ahead to either of those parts, feel free to do so. I'll go over why you might want to use such a big and heavy battery on such a small and compact camera, what are the benefits, and things like that. And then I'll show you specifically what's on here and how everything is connected and how it works. So let's get into it. So the Zcam E2 is actually a really great small, compact, and lightweight camera that's form factor really, really makes it great for using on cheaper, smaller gimbals, smaller sliders, and things like that. It can also last quite a long time from smaller and cheaper MPF batteries like this one. So why would you want to add all of this on here? Well, the camera may last quite a long time on relatively small sized batteries. Monitors don't always last quite as long. And I hate having large, heavy batteries hanging off the back of a monitor. It's just an awkward place for me to have a big hunk and battery hanging off there. The balance feels off to me and just the form factor. It's not ideal for me personally. This form factor for me here, the weight distribution, where everything is located, this is just a much more natural and logical way to do things for me. Plus, you can power both the monitor and the camera off of a single battery for a much longer time than you'd be able to power either off of smaller batteries individually. Sometimes lightweight isn't always a good thing either. With this being so small and light, especially if you have smaller and lighter lenses on there, hand holding it will definitely be a challenge. Those little shakes and imperfections in your hand will definitely transfer over to the camera side of things much, much easier with a light camera. So sometimes adding a little bit of weight on there gives it a little bit more stability. It will fight against those little shakes and those little imperfections just a little bit more. If you're hand holding or even if you have it on something like a halo rig or a shoulder rig, it will just kind of actually help to have something it's a little bit heavier. The battery meter on the E2 is also measured in volts, and while there is reasoning behind that, of course, it's not always the easiest way to judge your battery's life and how much longer you're going to be able to shoot on what remaining battery you have. The BM5 monitor I have on here, for example, is also the same way. It shows your battery meter in volts. Not only that, but the battery voltage meter on the BM5 specifically is right in the spot where your aperture is going to be listed on screen if you are sending over the uh, on-screen information from the E2 to the monitor. So it gets in the way and you can't really see very clearly what your aperture is when you have that on screen. For that reason, I often just turn it off. And there have been a few times when I was powering this with an MBF battery and the monitor just died without me even being able to predict that because I wasn't looking at the battery meter. Powering both of these with a single battery means you only have one battery level to monitor. And also the 10 step gauge on here is going to be a lot more natural to read than the voltage meter that you see on the monitor and the camera itself. On top of that, this blue shaped battery that I have on here has Wi-Fi in it and you can check with your smartphone uh, how much battery is left in terms of minutes. And it's an estimation of course, but this is going to give you an incredibly accurate idea of exactly how much longer you'll be able to film for with whatever you are currently charging from this battery. Of course, you can find MPF batteries for cheap as well, and they do even have some options that have a DC out that you can power your monitor from, but especially in that case, those smaller batteries are going to die even quicker, and you're just going to end up going through more. So that can add up, and it's just a lot more batteries that you have to bring with you and that you have to charge and keep track of every day that you go out on a shoot. Of course, V-mount batteries are often also more expensive, but chances are you already have some anyway, so you can just use that on here, and these batteries can power just a huge number of lights and different things that you probably have in your kit as well. And you only are going to need one of these to power this camera anyway for probably a long full day of shooting, so it's not like you're going to have to buy a bunch of them. So the higher price is kind of balanced out by the fact that you can use one of these to power the camera and the monitor for quite a long time compared to many smaller MPF batteries. So anyway, what is this and how does it all work? We'll start off with the battery itself and what I have on here and what I have been using on here is the Blue Shape Granite Mini battery. And this is a really awesome battery to use on here. Obviously it's form factor means that you don't add a lot of height to the camera. So instead of using a really tall battery on top of this small camera, it's gonna kind of fit in line with the body of the camera and it helps to make it look like it's all meant to be here. This one here is the 140 watt hour battery from Blue Shape, and this will run the camera and the B5 monitor on medium brightness for about seven hours or so, you know, depending on how often you're recording, if you're recording continuously or if you're starting and stopping. Uh, but it's quite a long battery life, and they do also have a 95 watt hour battery, but it's exactly the same size, and the weight is not all that much different. So honestly, if you're thinking about going for one of these batteries, I would highly recommend just saving up a little bit more money and getting the 140 watt hour, because you get a lot more out of it in, you know, essentially 
create the exact same form factor. You could also go for something like this V micro from Bebop, and it is actually a little bit smaller. It's a little bit deeper. This is the 150 watt hour, so basically the same capacity. It's a little bit deeper, but it's a little bit smaller and more cubic in shape. Um, there are, you know, ups and downs to both of these. This is not a battery review, um, but these are two batteries that I think would work fantastically on this setup because it's really, really going to fit right in line with the body of the camera in a really nice way. But like I mentioned earlier, these blue shape batteries do also have Wi-Fi built in, so you can really monitor a lot of information, including the remaining battery time, uh, depending on whatever you're powering. So you can have a really good idea of what kind of life you're gonna get out of these, and that's really, really useful. And on top of that, these can actually uh, send alerts to your phone when they are done charging, which is fucking awesome. Anyway, enough about the battery, let's get into the actual mount. So this cost about $150 and it was actually made by some of the users on the Facebook group for the Zcam E2. So if you want to grab one of these for yourself or if you're considering it, head on over to that Facebook group and just use the search bar and type in V-mount. And I'm sure that plenty of posts about this will come up, including some of my own. And you can see there exactly who you should be getting in touch with about ordering one if you want to grab one for yourself. This is made of a couple of parts actually all centered around a 3D printed kind of mounting bracket, I guess you could call it, that screws right into the actual body of the camera. It's really, really secure. And this V-mount clip here is an active clip. It has electronics in it, which you will power your camera and your monitor or whatever else you have connected to it just by putting the battery right on here. You don't have to use the D-tap out from your battery or anything like that. The plate is also pretty short, so it ends right up above this clip area. And so that means that if you're using one of these mini batteries, it really lets you take advantage of that mini size. You don't have a full-sized V-mount plate sticking out above the mini battery. So that's really great. And it makes it absolutely perfect to use in combination with both this small camera and the smaller batteries. Anyway, this plate screws directly into the 3D printed block, basically, that screws right into your camera's body and covers up the dummy battery, which is plugged into the MPF plate on the back of the camera itself. And that's hardwired to this uh, plate here. It's a GyroVu dummy battery that's hardwired right into here. So that's covered up. That means that you don't have to worry about uh, damaging that connection or putting any extra stress on that connection because the actual part which screws into the body of the camera is totally not relying on the connection of the MPF battery itself. This extra cable that comes out of the plate is also got a DC barrel on here that allows you to use like this cable right here, which comes with the BM5 to power it off of this same plate and again you don't need to use the additional d-tap uh, out on your battery itself it's all hardwired right into the plate and this did come with some extra cables as well depending on what your setup is but i am just terrible with electronics so i'm not even going to try and touch that however i will show you exactly what comes with this when you buy it all of the ports on the side are also accessible. The only thing that I noticed, the one thing that I noticed is that the USB port here, for example, when I'm using my uh, SSD from Angelbird, that cable connector is a little bit too fat and it doesn't quite fit in here. However, this block that is holding this to the body is just 3D printed plastic. So it would be very easy just to carve out a little bit of extra space right there uh, if you do need to do that but I always record to see fast anyway, so my other uh, USB-C cables have worked and it's not a problem. But it, it, just keep in mind that if you are using the SSD from Angelbird, it might be a little bit of a tight fit, at least with this current design. I don't know if they're gonna update this at all and make a little bit of an extra space because there are cutouts in other areas that allow a little bit more space for like the ethernet port, for example. So that's definitely something they could do in the future. But as of now, you would need to uh, do a little bit of DIY carving out that area if you are using that cable. Anyway, this V-mount clip is screwed directly into the 3D printed block that's on here and they don't recommend removing and inserting these screws too many times because that could possibly strip out the connections on that 3D block, 3D printed block. So if you want to remove this from the body, you're going to want to remove these four screws without having taken off this uh, V-mount plate. So it blocks it a little bit and it makes it a little bit tricky to get in there and unscrew those four screws. Um, and so it's not super quick to remove. If you do think you're gonna be going back and forth a lot between using NPF and V-mount batteries, then maybe you wanna consider that. Um, if somebody develops some kind of tool that makes this quicker without having to remove the hex wrench and put it back in every time you make one turn of each of these screws, that would be amazing. Um, but as of now, it takes a few minutes to take this off and it takes a few minutes to put it back on. Um, but just to show you exactly how long that is and what the process is like and to show you also what's under here, uh, I will do that now in real time and I will put a little clock on screen. I'll speed it up so you don't have to watch that. But I'll put a little clock on screen to show you how long it takes me to get this off of here. Here we go.
And you can see here that the actual, uh, this unit here, which has the plate and that 3D printed block that covers up the MPF battery, there's a little slot in here for that cable to go through and underneath. And then there's just this NPF battery on the back here. I'm sorry if I wasn't showing that to you. Um, but then the NPF battery is removed just as a standard NPF battery from the body of the camera. And that's it. This is the unit. It just looks like a V-mount plate mounted onto this 3D printed block, which is hardwired to a dummy NPF battery and the DC barrel, which will power your monitor. So that's all it is. And that's about how long it takes to take off. Again, the more I practice at removing this, I find ways to make it go a little bit faster. So um, it's definitely not gonna take you forever to put this on and take it off, but it's definitely not like a quick process. Uh, so just again, keep that in mind if you want to switch back and forth between MPF and V-mount often. But if you're going to be using this for longer periods of time, handheld or on a tripod or anything, uh, having a larger capacity battery like this helps in a lot of ways. The form factor, the weight, the distribution of weight, uh, the battery life, without having to monitor both battery lives at the same time, switch through all that, bring all those batteries with you, charge them all. Um, it just is a lot of uh, hassle to deal with all that. So this is a huge headache remover, I guess you could call it. And I have really been loving it. It's rock solid on there. It's not gonna put any extra stress on the battery connection. It's just a really, really great solution. And I applaud them for designing this. It would be awesome if they could kind of collaborate with some company to make this into a little bit more of like a polished looking and feeling product. But um, the idea here is absolutely wonderful. The way it connects to the camera, the way that it powers your camera and just uh, the form factor is absolutely perfect. Anyway, if you have any questions, again, let me know down below or head on over to the Facebook page for the Zcam E2. Use the search bar in there to search for V-mount and you'll see tons of information on it in that group. Uh, but if you have any other questions that you don't see there, let me know and I will do my best to get back to you. If you like this video or find it helpful, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to see more in the future. And as always, thank you for watching.